Hey everyone, it's Nathan and Sylvia from Oakcroft Films with another episode of Service Dog Tales. She had an eye booger. So before I get started, I'd just like to reiterate that the purpose of this channel and this series is not necessarily to demonize people, it's to educate people. Therefore, the bad guys that I discuss should not be thought of as bad guys, but rather people that made mistakes that we can all learn from. That being said, the lady who is the subject of today's episode is the perfect characterization of everything that businesses should not do or say to service dog owners. Figuratively, everything. So while I was planning out scenes for Hijacked, which if you haven't seen that yet, you should definitely check it out, I went to a lot of businesses to see if I could ask the owner for permission to use their establishment for some public scenes. Which, by the way, shout out to Bowman Library and the Shenandoah Valley Discovery Museum for helping me use their location. Again, really appreciate it. So I'm walking into the store, and right out front is this big sign that says, No Pets Allowed. And sometimes these signs have a little bit of a thing underneath them that say, Service Dogs Welcome. This one didn't. Which... Fine, whatever, there's no law says that you have to have a sign that says that, and Sylvia's not a pet, so it's not necessarily a condemnation of service dogs. Anyway, as soon as I get in, the lady at the counter looks up and says, Ah, uh, you can't have that dog in here. And this happens sometimes. It's a sad reality that every service dog owner needs to be prepared for. And about 95% of the times that this happens to me, the conversation goes like, You can't have that dog in here. Actually, she's a service dog. Okay, man, come right in. Did you know that 71.2187 statistics are made up on the spot? Because I just learned that from personal experience. Anyway, so I said, Actually, she's a service dog, so she is allowed to be here. And then she like got all suspicious looking, and then she was like, Oh... For what disability? Oh, I have Nunya Biznosis Syndrome. It's very debilitating. Look, I'm pretty open about my disability. So that question may not necessarily offend me, but it might offend the next person who walks in. And the reason why that rule about businesses not being allowed to inquire about what a person with a service dog's disability is, was to provide them with some measure of privacy. Because disability is heavily stigmatized in society today. So sometimes people just want to keep it to themselves, and they should have the right to. I mean, you're not supposed to see someone in a wheelchair and be like, Hey, what's going on there? And then to top it all off, because she's already said two illegal things to me, so third time's the charm, she says, Okay, well, as long as you can provide me with papers. Ow! My head actually hurts. Actually, you're not allowed to ask me for papers either. The only two questions that a business is allowed to ask is, is that a service dog? And what actions does your service dog perform for you? The reason why businesses are not allowed to ask for papers or identification from service dog owners is because the point of a service dog is to make someone with a disability more independent. If you're making them go through a security checkpoint every time they want to go into a store, that kind of defeats the purpose. I understand that some people might be worried about fake service dogs, and that is a legitimate concern, but you are more likely to catch a fake service dog by observing its behavior rather than by checking its identification. And I'll probably end up making a video about that later. Again, this woman is not evil. She's merely a characterization of a society that remains largely unaware of the needs and struggles of people with disabilities. We can't solve this problem through outrage or demonization. We solve this through education. So if you're a business owner, educate your employees. If you know a business owner, educate them and ask them to educate their employees. I would not be where I am without Sylvia. I would not be able to go the places I go without Sylvia. And through the activism, advocacy, and legislation of great individuals, I now have the legal right to have her. But every time I go into a restaurant or a store or any other public accommodation, I have to prepare myself for that right to be challenged. And although I've been trained to handle those situations, it's not fair. And I understand life isn't fair, but if we can do small actions just to make it a little bit more fair for everyone else, they're worth doing. Well, that's today's episode. Thank you all for watching. If you liked this video, please like, share, subscribe, check out some of my other stuff. Have a good day and stay human, everyone. Unless you're a dog. In, in which case, stay dog.